Hello from Chinature.com, this is Mark Josty. Today will be another old school shooting, uh, old, shoe, old school air gun shooting video. And uh, the main point is to bring out my old, old air guns out and let's check them out and see if they still work and such like that. So a lot of air guns here and they are stored for like months and years and some of them I don't even touch it anymore. So let's just take them out and play together okay so today's gun is oh, this one it came with a nice box but inside it's all messed up because i don't like foam and usually i just mix up my case of other guns so yeah anyway let's open this up oh this is the smith and wesson okay this is the smith and wesson 586 60 oh mine <laughs> Okay, so, uh, I got a scratch here? Oh, mine. Oh, look at that. That was bad. What the? Anyway, um, okay, so that's the gun. I actually bought the six inch barrel kit right here. It came with a nice six inch barrel. It's supposed to make the gun much more, um, uh, accurate and powerful. Okay, so it's supposed to give you like an extra boost in uh, FPS and in, in the power. Now you need this little device to help you unscrew the thing. Um, so we got a four inch here. Can we actually install this today? Let me see. And of course a bunch of spare mags right here as you can see. Okay, so i um, not going to bother with the pellet choosing today. So let's just have some fun together and see if this thing still works after a long time. Okay, so what do I have to do? Uh, man, I forgot how to work this gun out. Woo! <laughs> so, supposed to, um, you're supposed to take this, right, and then, like this, okay. And then you unscrew this thing out, okay, this little plug, and after that, this thing falls, oh, okay, this thing falls off like that. And then unscrew this. Almost forgot how to work it out. Eh? Unscrew the barrel. There we go. It's that easy. Now we can shoot like that. This is my shorty. Two inch. <laughs> hey. Maybe we should try shooting without a barrel. Let's see what happens. <laughs> anyway. Um, so that was fun. Uh, okay, so here is the two barrel TR. Okay, the stock one is uh, three point five inch or four inch. I'm not sure. The, the the upgraded one is six inch, much longer. Okay, so let's uh, just put that on, which is the head. Uh oh, uh, this one. I'm guessing no. This one is the head. Yes, this one. Okay, the longer one, the longer way. Okay, so just screw it in and basically your gun will work like that okay it's that easy so you can just shoot like this if you like but there's no sight <laughs> okay let's put the sight back on so there's a sight installed right here that can be uh, removed with a flat head screwdriver so just put that back in like so Woo. and my little cap lovely okay, put it back in Okay, so basically that's how you work it in. Okay, wow. Okay, I just did that in how many seconds? It's that easy. Okay, almost forgot how to do it. But it reminds me how fun it is to disassemble these guns and do the upgrades. Anyway, there we go. So this thing is a one of the Umrex super high. Let me turn on this light. It's one of the Umrex high end air pistol. And uh, what's so cool is that they made these guns very well with a nice, strong, and durable seal. Plus, um, the... Okay, just a minute. That, is that better? No. I'm trying to work my lighting. Okay. So, yeah. Basically, um, they put on a better seal for these things. So, the uh, seal to seal is more long-lasting. Uh, much better trigger, of course. The trigger is very nicely done. And everything is made of blue steel. 
Now, um, one thing I really got confused is that the um, there is a version of this pistol selling in uh, or this revolver selling in Germany, and they have a very nice glossy black uh, finish. Now this one is a matte black, so I'm not sure why they made that uh, change, but personally I think the uh, glossy one is nicer. Uh, yeah, but after having the Dan Wesson 4 inch uh, revolver, which is glossy black, I really hate it. So yeah, I'm not complaining. So this thing is like more real in a way okay the glossy black looks nice on photo but when you hold it the glossiness kind of feels cheap on the uh dan weston not sure if it's the dan weston's uh metals problem or something like that anyway so let's uh open the thing up okay the grip rubbery uh texture grip very solid grip you cannot really squeeze it it's not like the dan weston or uh, garbage grip it's like okay, those are the dan weston grips are like <laughs> really incomparable this one is real like rubber kind of texture texture and the, the damage and it's very plastic -y and can be loosened up uh very fast now this one it also has a metal retainer clip whatever you call that that sticks into here and secure it onto your gun so it's very nicely done now the mechanism of this is like a lever style so basically you Unscrew this all the way down, put the CO2 in, tighten, psh, and the CO2 is gassed up. Wow! Okay, simple enough, just like the revolver, uh, the real thing. Press here and it opens up. So basically, you don't even need the other hand to help. Just go like that and it drops down, it's like a real thing. Very nice. I actually do wish they make the cylinder uh, functional, but we cannot complain. Because most of the air gun is like that, so what can you do, right? That's technology, okay? Um, right now, they have a lot better technology and, you know, uh, show, uh, show, show operated, you will, not operated, show loading revolver like the, this one here, okay? Just like the, uh, this one. Now, you have the full working cylinder with the shell inside. This one, so this is the Umrex version of the SAA. It's actually very nice and very realistic. But, you know, give and take, right? This one is actually a pellet gun. I know there's a pellet version of the SAA, but it's just kind of different kind of toy, okay? Not the same. Now, I have a lot of these mags loaded up with whatever mysterious pellets, so I'm not sure what is inside. But let me tell you my little story with this thing, okay? Um, so, my, uh, at first I got the 4 inch barrel, right here, I got this one, this version, because, yeah, 4 inch, it says 4 inch on there, okay? So I got this version before, and I know they also have an 8 inch version, which I was trying to find or buy from Premier Air, but it just got out of stock, but the 8 inch is actually much more powerful, from what I know. Um, so... At first, I got the 4-inch and thought it was cheaper, okay? Because it was cheaper, I thought it was the same gun anyway. Who cares? It's not going to feel the same. But later on, you know, after two years or so, you want to try to upgrade it and see what happens. So, yeah, from the 4-inch, I got this little kit from uh, Premium Air and, um, yeah, so upgraded myself and tried. And it was, like, totally a different thing. It's the, a 6-inch revolver is a different kind of animal you know when you hold it the, the weight the thing the whole thing feels different it's like the same grip same gun but the same like the the whole feeling is not the same anymore it's very cool now with the eight inch i don't have any experience of eight inch revolver uh so that is a, a shame but uh, yeah it's fine and then i got the dan Wesson's eight inch the dan Wesson eight inch was like a it's almost like a gun that I want to put a stock on and trying to, you know, get a revolver rifle going. It's kind of funny like that. But the 8 inch is way too long. So maybe 6 inches just right at the, uh, like, the balance point between the weight, the size, and uh, the power. Now, um, I haven't shot this gun a long time. 
but when I was really high with the revolver, I used to shoot this a lot and do fast shooting with this thing. Like really go like that. And then put another one in. So I really tortured this thing quite uh, a lot. And I really like the fact that the uh, hammer on this gun, okay, I don't know how you can see that, but the hammer on this gun is actually very tough as compared to the 1911, the uh, CP88. When you cock the uh, hammer back, pay attention to the face right here. They usually have a little dot of silver color thing, which is the steel part. Now, around that thing is actually not steel, maybe not steel. But this one, the whole hammer, I don't see any little dots or whatever. The whole thing is the whole thing. And it slams onto a little uh, latch or plate, whatever you call that, a little piece right here. Okay, so it's uh, pretty durable. Now my 1911, I got two of them, the Umrex 1911, and they both uh, died very quickly because, uh, um, I don't know, one of them have problems with the uh, hammer and uh, I tried to change the hammer and just can't, I don't know why, it just can't work. The valve is dead or something like that, okay? It just can't fix it. Even if I give it to the gunsmith, it, they cannot fix it too. Now the second 1911, uh, lived very shortly and it just failed. So whatever you say, you know, I got two of them, the Umarex 1911, and they both don't work. So it's uh, a very bad experience. Now the Beretta 92FS, um, I have issues with that gun shooting in double action mode very quickly uh, because somehow the spring or the the hammer just wears out and it giving me low velocity on the double action. When I'm shooting single action, it's fine, but you know, these guns, you want double action, so not a good experience. Now, my CP88 is doing fine, uh, but before I actually got the spring replaced or modified, um, the gun was shooting low power on the double action too. So it was kind of like the design of those guns is lacking a quality spring for some parts to get that gun shooting well in the double action. Now this one, I do not have to do anything and it's actually the best shooting pellet revolver or, rev or gun in my collection. It's like really nice and you can shoot fast and it stays powerful. The CO2 is like not gonna freeze up so quickly but it's still super powerful as a revolver. Now, it's, this thing is shooting like 420 something. It's very, very nice. Okay, so um, before we uh, get off of other stuff, there's a little screw here that is kind of sticking out. So, see, just took the magazine and slam it. Anyway, so let's load up some magazine and do some shooting at the range together and see how the thing does. Now, before we go to the range, let's take our CO2 and do this together. So, we have Umrex CO2 and my... Crossman Pelgan oil. That's kind of funny. Okay, so Okay, as we usually do it like this take off the grip Okay, so oil Oil There we go Put this in, screw back in place. Now this one actually, I don't know if it's the, the shape of the grip, it makes it much easier to turn this brass screw for this gun. The uh, CP88 and stuff, they don't show uh, like half of the the curve right here, so it's harder to, uh, to do this action. Okay, now we're done, let's go. It's charged up, I can feel the cold ray. Good, no leaks. So after so many months of not touching it, it's still not leaking very nice. Okay guys, remember we're shooting the six inch version. Now let us just take some random magazine and see what's in the mag and we'll shoot them. So a lot of people will not agree, but here, there we go. We got some hyper velocity pellets. So some people say that their plastic skirt is gonna screw up your barrel, but who cares, you know? 
Um, so yeah, we got one, two, three magazine. Yeah, we got three mags of shot and then one mag of mixed pellets. Okay, let's go. Okay, everyone, let's get going. We are now at 25 feet, shooting my first mag of um of this hyper velocity pellet from Skenko, the brand. Skenko brand, Blue Arrow, 6.4 grains, and let's go. 25 feet. Okay guys, aiming from iron sight, we got two flyers and then the other stuff grouped pretty well here. Um, keep in mind that this is not any good targeting uh, pellet. This is Skenko Type 2 high velocity pellet. They're used really for prinkling use, so it's not supposed to be accurate. Now after this mag, we can see it grouped much better. Should be all sticking in this kind of this area. Very nicely done. So now let's do my next test. Is the can in can, pop can in soup can. Let's go. Skenko Hyper Velocity Pellet. Style with one more mag. Let's try to get a whole big hole there and just shoot around here. Very close. Okay guys, so that was a little bit disappointing with um, the Smith Wesson Smith and Wesson 6 inch barrel. Ah <laughs> oh, man, I don't have my crony today. I don't didn't bring it out, but uh, it's definitely not doing the job. I was trying to hit this pasta can and I was on my third magazine and it can't even pierce this side. Okay, there are some holes but I don't expect it to be like so weak. Ooh. The Skenko pellets inside. Now this uh, thing got a few holes in. There's a hole here, okay. The two exit hole, but seriously there's a lot of things that didn't punch through. That was kind of lame. Uh, I thought it can do better, so kind of disappointing. Um, I was already using the 6.4 grains pellet with the like the hyper velocity pellet that is uh, specifically nice in penetration is supposed to penetrate better than lead pellets but when I was using lead pellet it, it totally didn't do anything like it's, it's out of my expectation so yeah uh, the grouping with iron sight is not very impressive neither so compared to my other guns that I tried the uh, CP99 Compact Recon. Wow, with the iron, like not iron sights, right? with the uh, green dust sight, crappy green dust sight. It, it's doing super good. It's giving me super nice grouping. But this one, 
high-end pistol is not doing so well today. Maybe it needs cleaning, maybe something else. I don't know, okay? In the future, we'll test again with some match pellets and clean the barrel and see if that will do better. So kind of disappointing today with the result, but anyway, it's still working and not leaking, so it's pretty good. <laughs> we'll try to save the gun, okay? Um, if you have videos of your 586 uh, like shooting in action and target, you know, feel free to post it in the comment below and we can compare our results. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and like. Bye-bye!